broccoli that I planted in here, I don't know, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, is taken nicely and the plants have got additional leaves on them. They're doing just fine. Not quite so good where I took the broad beans out earlier on and I planted new broccoli uh, plants straight in and we've had a bit of a storm since then. Not a huge one, but a bit of one. And one has snapped off for sure. That one's looking a bit forlorn um, and there's three good ones. So I am gonna replace those two. I've got plants still coming on nicely. They're just not looking good enough to have a good start. So it's gonna be real easy to put a plant in here. I've already put lime into the ground. So I'll just make a hole and pop them in. So here we go. These are the plants and I've noticed even in the polytunnel, they're getting a little bit of slug damage. So anyway, I'm going to pick something that I think is quite strong and upright, but clearly this bit of wind we're having is a bit of a danger to them. Let's just pop this one up. That's a nice plant. And yeah, that one's not perfect really. I think we'll take him out and get this one in in its place. It's quite dry in here, even though it's been raining really hard. So it's drying out relatively quickly. And I'll just use a little bit of the line that's on the bottom of that plant, just around the surface. So he's in and we'll get rid of that one. And then this fella, which is clearly snapped off and uh, we'll pick another Fairly strong plant. There's one. And we'll pop him into. So let's move it along. And this soil is extremely soft and friable, which is wonderful. Right, got him in, and we're back to where we were, which is giving us the best possible chance. And while I'm down here, this one's looking. To be honest, a wee bit forlorn as well. That damage from the wind, well, the wind came quite strong and quite soon after I planted them. So I think that's probably what's caused the problem. So I think while we're here, we're gonna have that one out too. And one of the viewers made a perfectly reasonable observation from my broad bean harvesting the other day. And they were questioning why I didn't leave the broad beans in the ground just a little bit longer, or at least cut the tops off and leave the roots in the ground because of all the nitrogen nodules that are on the roots of those broad beans. And I have to say, I noticed those nodules when I was taking them out. And that would have been the right thing to do. So thanks for that suggestion. Lesson learned by me. And one option is just to knock all those nodules off and into the soil. But... I probably didn't do the optimum thing. And well, that's what gardening is about, learning from each other. So thank you. So I've had a reasonable crop off this broccoli. You've got to bear in mind that I've got club root in this bed and therefore everything is being competed with that I grow in terms of brassicas. And I've been using, as I've said, garden lime fairly effectively. And we've had, I would say, a half decent crop off of this broccoli. Not enough that it really is worth growing lots and lots, but I just like to have a little bit. And I've harvested it all now, so I'm gonna take these out, but it's gonna be very interesting to see if we've got any club root on the bottom of these and I'll share them with you. So this plant is very mature, it's been cropped, and the lime has worked perfectly because there is no club root on there whatsoever, which is a really good sign. And I do wonder if you manage to grow successfully year on year and keep the club root at bay with lime, whether actually you win through eventually and it diminishes, I don't know. I'm sure there'll be some people out there who've been on that journey and worked it out. 
but that one's clear as well. And usually I can tell whether the plant is going to have had a problem because I either don't get any broccoli head or it flowers quickly or it just dies or kills over, doesn't really produce much. All of those are, are okay. Now let's go have a look at this one. This is a big root system. I can see the remnants of the garden lime in amongst it. I can't see any evidence of club root in there. Man, there's another one. Again, another big root system. And to be honest, if the root system is that big, when you pull it out of the ground, it's a pretty good indicator that it's okay. Now these two are fairly small and I'm a bit suspect of them. Well, there's not much root system on here, but I can't see any evidence of club root. So I have had one plant out of here that has definitely had club root. So I know it's still in here, but there we are. That's all those plants and not one of them with those telltale nodules on the bottom of the roots. Well, I'll recover that bed just by giving it a quick hoe over. I've removed the tiny amount of weed that was on there. And while well, this, this is chicken feed. Well, I wanted to give you a quick update on the onions that have got white rot and what we're doing. So I'm just gonna pull this cover back and this is typical situation. And what we've got is quite a lot of onions that are falling over and you can see I can just pull that one out of the ground and there's the, the white rot. But what we're doing is we're harvesting these, peeling them, putting them in the food processor, chopping them up, getting them into a fairly fine chop and then flattening them out in a plastic uh, freezer bag, putting them in the freezer and freezing them. And then they come out when we're ready, basically in a slab and we just break the bits off we want and add it to the various meals. So even though that one has been badly affected, it's fairly firm and we'll make good use of it. So I'm just gonna work my way around these and the ones that are really not in a good way can just be pulled out so easily. And there are a few in here that are doing a lot better than that. And I'm just gonna leave those in because on the face of it, some of them get away without being affected. You can see there's quite a lot there. Let's carry on round. And certainly in the, the ones down in the bed, lower down, that one's got a good root, so I'm not gonna pull it out. Um, the ones in the bed lower down, they seem to be still growing quite well. So I'm just leaving them to carry on. Yeah, that's firm. That one just pulls out. That one's coming out. That's firm, pulled out. Yeah, so you can tell the difference quite easily between those that, I'm gonna pull this one because it is gone to seed. In fact, there's a couple gone to seed here. That one's lent right over and sure enough, it pulls out really easy. So this is better for her champion and it does seem to be pretty susceptible to white rot. Although I guess when you've got it in the soil, there's not an awful lot you can do for any onion. Um, some may have more resistance than others and we'll see how we go. There's another one that just pulls out. So that's left quite a few onions that can continue to grow on. And if they subsequently get white rot, then we'll just do the same. I'll show you the ones down below on the bottom bed because they're a bit of a different story. And it's quite interesting to see the differences between one bed and another or one onion and another. Now, anyone who's new to growing onions might well be asking themselves, well, what's the problem? If you can pull them and use them, 
albeit by freezing them, why are you bothered about it? But of course, anyone who grows onions season on season will know that part of the challenge is growing onions that you can store so that you can use them through the winter months. And that was my objective. So I know that this bed has got white rot because I've pulled the odd onion that's got it. And I can see a really weakly one here. So we'll have a look at that. Well, yeah, you can see some of the white telltale signs of white rot. And there's another one here. And of course, it just pulls out the ground real easy. And looking around this bed, there's probably two or three like that. There's another one. But the bulk of them are looking really healthy. And I think that I've got white rot in isolated spots in here and it hasn't perhaps spread all the way through the bed because there's some really decent sized onions. So fingers crossed that some of these will see out the growing season fully and will turn into a storing onion. That'd be great. So a fresh pair of gloves, clean the tools after handling those onions with the white rot. And now I'm gonna just get my garlic to the next step. So it's been in the shed drying out now for a few weeks and I'm just gonna take the tops off, leave myself a decent looking garlic to take in. So I'll work my way through these. I've got quite a lot to bring out of the shed, uh, but it's a job that I quite enjoy because well, at the end of it, you've got an end product, which is fantastic. And these are looking really nice. So onward and through all of the garlic that's been drying out. And hopefully we'll have a good crop to take home and show Mrs. K. So it's not been the most successful season of garlic growing for me because of white rot, but this is what I salvaged. And that's not bad. That'll keep me and Mrs. K going right the way through to next year. So we'll just need to conquer what we do next year with white rot. And as I've said in my earlier videos, I think probably I'm gonna stop growing onions in most of the beds, if not all of them. And garlic. I think I'm going to try growing some in the polytunnel next year and see how that does. I think it matures a lot earlier and as some people have suggested if I grow it around the edges of the bed then I can grow things in the bed in the polytunnel and next year I'm going to be growing tomatoes in that bed. So there we are some really good garlic in there some really fine specimens and also a few tiddlers but it's all good and it'll last us good times. I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button, and if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochenbaal.